Hey there! Ready to dive into the world of a classic 1933 movie? Get ready for a treat because we've got some funny, shocking, and sad facts coming your way. Released in 1933, this groundbreaking film shook the industry with its special effects and thrilling storyline. It follows the journey of a giant ape captured from a remote island and brought to New York City, where he wreaks havoc before meeting a tragic end. The movie has endured through the years thanks to its timeless themes of adventure, love, and the consequences of human greed. The thrilling action and unforgettable scenes keep audiences coming back for more. Now, here's a question for you. What do you think makes this film such an everlasting symbol of the movie industry? Do you have a special memory associated with watching this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. So, buckle up and get ready for a wild ride through the world of this classic. Decades have passed, yet the enduring charm of a classic film from 1933 still captivates audiences today. Directed by Marion Cooper and Ernest Gozdak, this movie continues to stand as a timeless portrayal of a colossal ape on the silver screen. It's a story that unfolds with an adventurous spirit and characters driven by their desires, taking viewers on a thrilling journey from a mysterious island to the bustling streets of a city. The narrative introduces us to a charismatic but morally questionable adventurer who sets out on a daring expedition that leads him to an unexpected encounter with a creature of immense size and power. Along the way, we meet a brave woman who becomes entangled in the unfolding drama, adding a compelling dynamic to the tale. As the story progresses, we witness the awe-inspiring spectacle of the creature's rampage through the city, juxtaposed with moments of tenderness and vulnerability that humanize him in the eyes of the audience. Through it all, the characters grapple with their own motivations and the consequences of their actions, leading to a climactic showdown that leaves a lasting impact on the viewer. This film is a testament to the power of storytelling and the enduring appeal of classic cinema. It's a thrilling adventure that has stood the test of time, captivating audiences for generations with its timeless tale of love, loss, and the pursuit of the unknown. In 1933, there was a famous actress who appeared in 11 movies that year. She played a big role in a special movie that stood out. Also, there was a writer who usually worked on different movies, but this time he only worked on this one. In this story, there's a scene where Captain Inglehorn talks to a native chief on a strange island. At first, their talk seems hard to understand. But when the chief suggests taking Anne Darrow, Captain Inglehorn firmly says, no, no one Malay, which means the same thing. This fits well because the story is set near Sumatra, so it adds a realistic touch. In the big picture of 1933 movies, this one is different. It's special because of the actress's many roles and the writers only work on it. The interesting language detail between Captain Inglehorn and the native chief makes the adventure feel more real. After the actors and actresses wrapped up their scenes for the film, it took Willis H. O'Brien a year to complete the special effects work. Simultaneously, Marion C. Cooper worked on assembling the film. Faye Ray, the lead actress, managed to squeeze in four other films during the period between her involvement in this project and its eventual release. A notable addition to the cast was Catherine Curry, marking her debut in the film industry. However, the spotlight remained on Fay Ray, who asserted her influence by personally insisting that her character be a blonde. Taking charge of her on-screen appearance, she handpicked a wig from the Max Factor shop in Los Angeles, further shaping the iconic image of her character. These behind-the-scenes insights reveal the dedication and attention to detail invested in bringing the 1933 film to life. From the meticulous effects work by Willis H. O'Brien to Faye Ray's personal choices for her character's appearance, each element played a crucial role in shaping the final product. In the world of movies, there was a really important moment way back in 1933. A very good actress did something amazing on the screen. She acted so well that it made the story really interesting and full of feelings. This was her first movie, and it introduced her as a great new actress. This moment was not just a big show. It was a very important event in movie history that a lot of people liked. The way this actress acted was so different and special that it got a lot of attention. People thought it was a cool way to tell a story and they really liked the actress. Even now, many years later, people still talk about this moment. It inspired other people who make movies and left a big memory. The movie shows how powerful stories can be and how one person's acting can make a big difference. Looking back, it's amazing to see how great and smart it was. This actress and her first movie are now a very important part of movie history. In the late 1980s, RKO transferred distribution rights for the original movie and its sequel to Ted Turner's company. 
These rights now belong to Warner Brothers in North America, Latin America, and Australia. The film's copyrights remain with RKO Pictures, LLC. Warner Brothers also released an animated retelling of the original movie in 1998. Years later, they co-produced two films in the MonsterVerse Kong Skull Island in 2017 and Godzilla vs. Kong in 2021. In 1986, a sequel called King Kong Lives was made by DDL, who now have their films owned by Studio Canal. Fei Ray, after filming, spent a day recording screams for the film, which she dubbed her Area of the Agonies. She affectionately referred to King Kong as her little man. Amidst the waves, Anne noticed Iggy, her little monkey friend, sticking close to her more than anyone else on the ship. Iggy, with his playful antics, made it clear he favored Anne. Even the big cousin of King Kong seemed to have a soft spot for her. While he was fierce with others, he showed a gentle side around Anne, almost like a guardian. This surprised everyone on board and added to the mystery of the creatures they encountered. Reflecting on their adventures, Bruce Cabot praised Noble Johnson for his kindness and nobility. He thought Johnson was a truly good man, a sentiment shared by many who worked with him. Filming the whole thing was tough, taking 55 weeks, not counting all the prep work. The crew faced huge challenges, but they managed to create a fantastic movie that would wow audiences for years to come. This story, both on and off the screen, shows how exciting the unknown can be and how creative people can be when they explore it. Among the towering creatures and brave explorers, there's also a tale of surprising bonds and unlikely friendships. Approached for the female lead were Jean Harlow and Ginger Rogers, both famous blondes, but they passed. The part went to Fay Ray, a brunette who insisted on wearing a blonde wig. The 2005 DVD restoration revealed some risque scenes typical of a pre-code film. Notably, in two scenes, Fay Ray's attire makes it obvious she's not wearing a bra. These scenes might not have passed the Breen Code the following year. King Kong made it to 43 on the American Film Institute's Top 100 Greatest American Movies list in 1998, climbing to 41 in the 2008 anniversary list. When Denham and his crew first set foot on the island, they planned to return the next day. As they retreated, Denham whistled the tune St. James Infirmary. Scenes of Kong climbing down Skull Mountain were removed from the final cut, but the mountain itself appears in the most dangerous game filmed alongside King Kong. Marion C. Cooper, inspired by his childhood near an elevated train, incorporated this into the movie where Kong destroys a similar train 